so today i'll be teaching you guys uh, what is utilization ratio and how does it matter uh, when it comes to our project uh, whenever we are going to use any kind of a steel building how is it going to work uh, how how does uh, that affect our uh, building something like that so first of all uh, uh, the utilization ratio ratio we should understand what is utilization ratio first of all uh, normally what happens is uh, if there is a section uh, take it as a rectangular section or maybe a square or i section anything that of that of sort, that sort and if you are going to place it in a, uh, just imagine this to be a beam and these are connected uh, to the beams uh, and uh, these are connected like this and these are the two beams that is connected to this beam and what happens is uh, every member has its own capacity correct so every member has its own capacity how much strength it can take or something like that so the capacity means the section member capacity how much strength it can take how much kilos it can take how much moment can it take something like that and demand means the load that i'm going to act on it the load i'm going to act on it whether it is okay or not something like that so how it works is uh, now right now 0 0.9 and 0 0.8 is given that is the uh, ratio that we should keep it why should we keep it see you can see it here so why should we keep it so usually what happens is uh, we need to keep it because 10 percent that means example 0 0.9 that means 90 percent 90 percent is the capacity or, or the strength of the this thing the member and if it is going to cross uh, 90%, that means this 10% whatever remaining is there, right? This is a buffer. So buffer left in case of emergency, in case of if it is required or something like that, this 10% is required. So we are not going to work on this. Like we are not going to take this into consider. We can't take this risk. So that is the reason we always keep it uh, between 0 0.8 and 0 0.9. So that is very important when it comes to this. And imagine if it to be 0 0.5 or something like that, it is underutilized. So what does that mean when the load is acting? If the load is acting on the member and the capacity of the member has it has its capacity and it is going to take this much of load, that means it has a capacity of taking 100% load, but we are going to add only 50%. That means this 0 0.5. We are going to only add 0 0.5. That means it is underutilized, correct? So that is how it is going to work. And we should be very careful. We shouldn't uh, uh, go for underutilized uh, section because it doesn't matter for you guys. You can add that. Uh, it'll, uh, it'll be passing. That is not a problem. The problem here is uh, if you're going to do that, uh, the whole section, the ton will increase. And you know that uh, in a case of a uh, steel industry, so uh, the competition is like if you even reduce one ton, uh, the whole member, uh, the cost will reduce uh, something like that. So we should be very careful about that. Now, what is uh, if I want to reduce 0 0.8 to 0 0.9, what should I do? How, how can it work? Uh, if you want to reduce 0 0.9 to 0. Point, uh, sorry, 0 0.8 to 0 0.9, sorry, 0 0.9 to 0 0.8, uh, I should such, do such a way that I need to increase the section size. So what is the section size you can see, right? Uh, section size you can see, right? Uh, we need to reduce that uh, to, uh, uh, like we should uh, increase the size. Uh, we need to increase the size uh, even more something like that if you want to uh, in, uh, decrease uh, 0 0.9 to 0 0.8 okay so this is how it's going to work now as you guys are clear that how the utilization uh, ratio works uh, and if you want to get this utilization ratio in your uh, stat model you guys need to go to the post processing uh, process and there you get it so that is how it's going to work now let us understand that uh, there are few things that you should understand before uh, uh, going to the stat pro model uh, here there is something called as kl by r effective length by radius of gyration how does it um, matter when it comes to a centeredness ratio we know that uh, if the increase of uh, if you are going to increase the depth uh, we are going to decrease the uh, slender uh, centeredness ratio and if you are going to increase the thickness thickness means uh, example uh, everything has its own thickness so here uh, you can see the thickness uh, that is cage uh, something like that and if i'm going to increase that uh, how does it work increasing the thickness uh, means radius of gyration by increasing the section modulus or choosing a different section so example what happens is uh, if you are going to increase the thickness uh, 
increase the thickness and by increasing the thickness on the section modulus or the choosing of different uh, section that means if you increase the section go with a different section you are going to increase the thickness that is how it's going to work so it is like directly proportional if you increase the section modulus section modulus you are going to increase the uh, thickness so that is how we go work both increases so that is kind of a very good thing when it comes to slenderness ratio if you want to get it into proper uh, uh, ratio something like that then reduce the unsupported length if the section length is too much example if it is uh, like failing at uh, 6 meter or if the ratio uh, 6 meter you are getting a slenderness ratio of uh, uh, like uh, it is 0 0.9 or something and right? if you want to decrease it you can uh, decrease the length or maybe you can keep it as 4 meter or something like that but uh, usually that doesn't happen no? we always uh, go with the uh, highest length and uh, we increase the depth that is how it works in the industry because uh, there are a lot of things that comes to uh, like there are a lot of factors that comes to picture when it comes to designing of this so this is how it works now next uh, uh, we should understand something that is very important uh, to reduce the unsupported length of even we can give the bracings too so imagine this to be a beam section and if i'm going to connect the bracing to this one to the other section what do you think the unsupported length will uh, increase right so that is how it go to i mean uh, decrease that is how it go to work so example if this length is for around six meters and if i'm going to connect a bracing here and here the length will uh, distribute it will be like one meter here or maybe three meter here and uh, here one meter will be there so something like that or 1.5 1.5 something like that so it will reduce the uh, unsupported length so that is how it is going to work next is uh, combined axial uh, forces and bending uh, moment so how does it work normally what happens is uh, when in, there is a failure in the section uh, so usually we go with the uh, uh, here uh, remember that you are going to increase the depth uh, so this is a very important thing uh, when it comes to synthesis ratio and when it comes to uh, combined strength of beam uh, uh, imagine if it is a semi compact uh, section or maybe a uh, plastic compact section or maybe if it is a section that is uh, uh, compact section like only the compact wow. section something like that uh, or uh, maybe a plastic section uh, just imagine uh, it will be like that uh, so normally what happens uh, you can you can see here uh, there is moment in this uh, moment z and moment y you guys know that uh, m is equal to f into z so what does it mean if you going to increase the depth the moment also increase moment uh, resistance so that increases the moment resistance if you are going to increase the depth yeah, it is going to increase the moment resistance resistance I'm sorry about my hand <laughs> this is how I write so this is one thing then it comes to web thickness so as I've told you it earlier uh, the thickness is very important when it comes to shared uh, capacity so what happens is uh, example uh, this is I section uh, the these are the flanges correct two flanges and one web and the web the thickness whatever you guys can see here and whatever the thickness you can see here the, these things are mattering too much when it comes to uh, moment resisting thing so whenever it, uh, there is a shear failure or something like that uh, remember you need to increase the uh, the web thickness and whenever there is a moment failure we need to increase the flange thickness so that is how it's going to work so choose a deeper or heavier section so that uh, you can resist the axial force and the uh, bending movement so this is how it's going to work next is this uh, laterally supported beam laterally supported me beam means uh, it's a good thing uh, what you need to understand is so uh, if the lateral support is removed lateral support is removed we need to go with uh, the beam will fail so lateral supported uh, the beam will fail you should remember that so it's always uh, good that uh, laterally supported beam should be provided so always verify uh, the like uh, the bracings provided all those things so these are the things that are very important and uh, 
remember one thing uh, lateral torsional buckling lateral torsional buckling uh, comes in this uh, picture like uh, to this picture when you doing this one uh, lateral torsional buckling this is very important uh, factor when it comes to lateral stability so remember this one uh, and if the claws appears uh, in the output uh, then the beam is passing remember that if the lateral support beam is uh, like it is given 8.2.1 uh, is given it is passing so right now uh, this is a section that you can see that are fading so i'll be showing you the model ones uh, how it works hoping you guys have understood the concept right now uh, there is a model that i would like to show you guys uh, where do i find this uh, utilization is here uh, and if i want to know the proper uh, how it is failing or something like that uh, you need to go to this one and there is something called as see uh, let me so in this one so here uh, i have explained you guys the uh, clause uh, 9.3.1 uh, that is uh, combination so here there is something called a slenderness ratio so slenderness ratio and uh, here there is uh, 8 point uh, uh, sorry 8.2.1.2 or uh, 122 see uh, let me show you guys how it works see right now if i want to see what are the things that are failure failing see these are passing now so if i'm going to select this one no, sorry select uh, beam view results so see if it is going to pass in this one no, so what does that mean no? it means that it is going to so as you guys can see here uh, 1.2 uh, like just uh, go with this one 1.2 what does this mean no? see 1.2 means it is failing in uh, slenderness ratio that means we need to increase the depth so just go to the section and increase the depth and here it is passing 0.5 but the problem is it is in 0.5 uh, 2 or something like that and the uh, capacity is too less so, so what we need to do we need to uh, decrease the sections but the point is we should be very careful at once first what we need to do is we need to design the beam section sets first we need to complete this of uh, the primary beam and the secondary beam then we need to go with the uh, column because uh, if the column beam is going to increase uh, beam size is going to increase uh, uh, weight is going to increase the moment is going to increase and the load will uh, distribute to the column so first uh, we need to uh, figure it out how this this will be passing then we can uh, fix it off so that is how it is going to work example slenderness ratio so this is uh, and this is for the slenderness ratio so you know that this is failing due to the uh, i see 1.27 and this is too dangerous so we should keep it around to 0 0.9 or 8 something like that in this case right now nothing can be seen as 0.1 uh, point yeah 0.8 is set. this one thing is in so that is safe and here also 0.9 is set. i think yeah close uh, see what normally happens here is uh, why can, why well, what does this mean in slenderness ratio it is see if it is going to pass in this so, so example uh, if i'll show this to you uh, let's go with one uh, passing section see these have gone through a lot of other process too like the other clauses whatever is there you know whatever the passing sections are it will go with all the process and then it says that yeah after going through all these things even in this also it is going to pass but uh, when it comes to this one see 9.3.1 i have been through a lot of other uh, section uh, like processes uh, it has been passed but in this one it is failing so that is the reason in the allowable session is ratio is one but the actual ratio that we got is 4.5 and we need to uh, get that cleared so that is how it is going to work and if you look at this properly there are a lot of other things too and uh, those are not that important uh, when it comes to this here uh, the very important thing is allowable ratio and uh, normalized uh, ratio in uh, so these are the very important thing when it comes to section and uh, if you felt the video was useful for you guys please do like share and subscribe and uh, please do comment uh, if you need any other new videos thank you